Uh, in this segment, uh, we will look at uh, synthesis of DC and uh, sinusoidal AC voltages and uh, the, the applications are in electric drives, uh, UPS and uh, power systems. Uh, so, let us get started. Uh, just to put the, the overall structure in front of us, uh, we have uh, utility on one side and load on the other side and we have this uh, voltage link converter where there is a DC link voltage here and uh, it is convert 1 on one side and convert 2 on the other side. But we are primarily looking at uh, this, uh, this side over here where, you know, we are saying that let us say we have a DC voltage available. Uh, how it is converted is uh, you know, something else, but uh, how we can uh, convert that uh, are, so what we do is we chop it up to either uh, provide a DC, for example, if we have a DC motor on this side, or uh, we can chop it up to supply either a single phase AC or three phase AC, for example, to an AC motor, to an AC motor as shown here. <coughs> so in this case, we need uh, two power poles, uh, whether we have single phase uh, AC that we are synthesizing or DC motor, or if we are synthesizing three phase, then we have three power poles. And uh, we uh, we have looked at uh, these uh, switching power poles uh, with direction bidirectional power flow before, but this is just a very quick uh, review. So let's say that in this case the current is positive, that is it's flowing in this direction over here. Uh, and uh, so, uh, the two devices that would conduct based on whether this Q uh, is uh, 1 or 0 are shown here. When Q is equal to 1, this current would flow through here. And when Q is equal to 0, even though this transistor is gated on, but the current would actually uh, flow through this diode over here. Okay. And, uh, <coughs> Uh, similarly, when uh, we can say, we can show that when this IL is negative, that means it's flowing in this direction. Then when Q is equal to 1, uh, even though this transistor is gated on, uh, this current would flow through here. And when uh, uh, Q is equal to 0, then of course this transistor is gated on and the current would flow through here. So we can, uh, you know, present this in a somewhat different way. We can say that when Q is equal to 1, uh, this signal is 1 and this signal is 0 here. In that case, if the current at the current port is positive, it will flow through here. Or if the current is negative, it will flow through here. And essentially, this switch is in the top position here. Whereas when Q is equal to 0, uh, this current would flow through this diode here like this if it's positive or it will flow through this transistor here uh, like this if uh, it's negative. So essentially, uh, this switch is in this negative uh, down position in this diagram here. <coughs> so uh, we have also seen earlier the average representation of the switching power pole. Uh, and uh, let's say that for uh, this duty ratio dA, the switch is in the up position. So the average value of the voltage that appears at the current port uh, can be related to this input DC voltage by this duty ratio here. Similarly, the average value of the current that flows from the, the voltage port can be related to the average value of this current by this duty ratio. And therefore, uh, these two equations combined uh, lead us to this uh, uh, average representation by an ideal transformer with this controllable duty ratio, where dA could be in a range from 0 to 1 here. So here we, we, we are showing the average voltage that appears at the current port and the average current that is drawn from the voltage port. And uh, this, the switching waveforms in this uh, bidirectional switching power pole are sh shown in this diagram. And generally, inst rather than using a ramp or a sawtooth signal, as we had seen in uh, switch mode uh, DC power supplies or buck or boost converters, here we use a triangular waveform. And this triangular waveform, uh, let's call it V triangle. 
and uh, this is a signal level waveform which uh, let's say is varying between 0 and some peak value uh, V triangle hat and this waveform also establishes the switching frequency in this uh, switching power pole and uh, this uh, waveform then is compared with a control voltage in a comparator and and which is then producing the switching signal Q sub A and as you can see it's either 1 uh, here when the control voltage is higher and it's equal to 0 when the control voltage is lower than this triangular waveform voltage here. So uh, uh, correspondingly you can also see what will happen to the, the voltage at the output of the, the switching power pole VAN it's equal to VD when the switch is in the top position and it's equal to 0 when the switch is in the bottom position here okay. So QA and uh, the voltage at the uh, current port uh, they have identical waveforms okay and uh, <coughs> except one is switching between 1 and 0 the other one between the DC bus voltage uh, VD and 0 here. So just looking at the one half the switching time period from here to here you can see that uh, during this interval uh, the switch is in the top position and the output voltage is VD and uh, during this interval here the remaining interval over here uh, the switch is in the bottom position and therefore uh, QA is 0 and uh, also this VAN is 0. So the average value that we get is uh, average value of this VAN is equal to VDA uh, which is the duty ratio times uh, VD and what we had looked was only the half the time period but the waveform is similar in the other half. So from here we can easily see that uh, this duty ratio is related to the control voltage which is this here divided by the peak of this triangular waveform. So if this uh, peak of uh, the triangular waveform was equal to 1 then uh, numerically uh, the duty ratio and the control voltage would be the same. So that is what's uh, shown here once again uh, uh, where it shows that in this comparator we are controlling this control voltage with the triangular waveform output is the switching signal which is causing the switch to go up or down and as a consequence we have uh, an average uh, duty ratio DA here which depends upon the, the ratio of these two quantities and uh, it can be represented graphically uh, by a circuit here uh, by means of uh, this comparator which is represented by this block here and uh, the output at the, yeah, at the current port is related to the voltage at the voltage port by this duty ratio DA. <coughs> so here we have to recognize that uh, the voltage appearing at the current port it, you know it has an average value but it's not DC. Uh, it has DC but it has other harmonic components. So for example if you are trying to synthesize a DC waveform uh, then uh, in steady state we will have harmonics at the switching frequency and its multiples as shown here whereas if you were trying to synthesize some AC waveform as we will see later on at some low frequency F1 then we will have uh, at, the, at the switching frequency and its multiples uh, we will have uh, sidebands which correspond to uh, you know the harmonics of this uh, fundamental frequency. So that is something we have to be aware of that uh, what we are getting at the output uh, in, this in these circuits uh, the voltage at the current port uh, that is not uh, perfectly DC or perfectly sinusoidal <coughs> but it has harmonics in it but those are at uh, very high uh, frequencies, switching frequencies and its multiples. So, so let's see how we can synthesize uh, uh, a DC for applications uh, in for example DC motor drives. So we want to apply some D, uh, average DC voltage here that's what we would like to produce and uh, the input is v, v sub D here and we can see that the average that we can produce can be in this range minus VD <coughs> to 
plus V D. <coughs> so, think of uh, uh, some fictitious point N over here. Okay, it doesn't exist, but let's just think of it. Okay, and what we will do is we will try to synthesize uh, the average V A N here from this fictitious point N to A to be half of the output voltage that we uh, desire, and uh, V B N as defined here, voltage of uh, point B with respect to this point N, and this V B N to minus half of the, the output voltage we desire, okay. And what we will do is we will introduce a common mode voltage uh, in both of these poles. And as you can see, uh, from one pole to the other, this common mode voltage will disappear, okay. So this common mode voltage that we introduce, uh, the best value to pick would be, at least one value, would be half the, the DC bus voltage. So we raise both the, the pole voltages by this common mode voltage here. So what happens is that uh, if we did that, then the voltage of this uh, uh, pole A with respect to uh, the negative of this DC bus capital N, this VAN would be equal to uh, this uh, VA uh, with respect to this little n plus the common mode voltage. Similarly, uh, we can write it for uh, pole B here, right? And uh, where this VAN is equal to V0 over 2, where this VBN is equal to minus V0 over 2, right? And maybe I should put, put bars here to show that uh, this is average that we are talking about in neglecting the ripple here. So this can be represented by uh, this diagram to the right where uh, we have uh, introduced this common mode voltage in both poles of VD over 2. Uh, VAN is given here, VBN is given here, and as you can see, uh, if you look at the voltage from A to B, <coughs> that is what we are trying to apply to the DC load to the right. You can see that this common mode voltage disappears, and this uh, V0 here would be the sum of this uh, minus this, which makes it V0. So essentially, uh, we get what we are looking for. Just to uh, confirm this, uh, reaffirm this, V0 is equal to VA N minus VB N, right? So common mode voltage disappears, and uh, we get what we were trying to synthesize here. So that's again is shown by means of this average circuit, uh, where each uh, power pole is replaced by an ideal transformer with uh, controllable turns ratio ratios given by uh, these two. And uh, once again, these equations are repeated uh, that we have uh, VAN from here to here uh, given by this equation, and from here to here. Uh, given by this equation here, and uh, the duty ratios for uh, these two switching power poles are given uh, by these two equations here. So the gain of uh, the DC uh, drive converter can be very easily calculated to be uh, just this quantity over here. And if you look at the switching waveforms, uh, we have uh, uh, two control voltages. Uh, and the, the triangular waveform is varying between zero and V triangular hat, uh, and this is the, the complete switching time period, and this is half the switching time period over here, TS over two, uh, and we can see here that uh, uh, for pole A, the switching signal and the output voltage uh, is VD and R1, and then it's a zero over here, uh, for pole B, uh, from, from here to here, uh, we have uh, this VD R1 for QB or, and then 0 over here, right? So knowing that V0 is equal to VAN minus VBN, uh, we can then obtain the waveform for 
the voltage that appears at the output across these two poles, and that would be switching as shown here from VD to zero to VD to zero, and its average value was calculated earlier. And uh, similarly, we can see what happens to the currents. Uh, whenever you have a switching power pole, uh, there is a current associated with it. So we have current uh, for pole A and pole B, and then the total current that is coming from the voltage port ID is equal to IDA plus IDB. Yeah. <coughs> okay. So uh, here is a numerical example. Uh, we will not go into the details except to see the waveforms. Uh, we have the, the triangular waveform shown here, the, the control voltage for pole A, control voltage for pole B. Uh, we get the output voltage across uh, pole A at the current port, across pole B over here, and uh, subtracting one from the other, uh, we get the voltage across uh, the output uh, from pole to pole, and uh, it gives us this uh, ripple. It has some average value, which is given right here, uh, and if you subtract the average value from the actual waveform from of V0, we get the ripple in the, uh, in the output voltage, uh, which will cause a ripple in the, the output current, and that is superimposed on the average value based on the parameters given in this example. This is the zero line over here, right here. So this current output current has this average value, but it has some ripple where the current is actually going from 3.5 to 4.5 in this example. And corresponding to this, then we can also calculate what the current drawn from the DC port uh, would be, voltage port would be, and uh, it has this average value over here. Okay. So one can go through this numerical example and see uh, how these waveforms would look like. So in summary, uh, we have looked at the synthesis of DC. We really haven't looked at the synthesis of sinusoidal AC voltages, but uh, we will take a look at it uh, in, uh, in the next section, next, next uh, segment.